It's Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, and we are live from Hickory. It's country-ish. Alan! Get the country boy. And he's making it good. He was Charles underdog, dressed in beer rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his dream. Headed for Southern Cal Wound up the TV and film Making popsicle proud Now this country boy Is back with his family Got himself a podcast He knows it'll last Cause he's in Hickory That's right, I am from Hickory and I'm happy about it. I hope you're happy, no matter where you are. What up, Bumpkins? You're about to watch and or listen to episode 88 of Country-ish. We have a swinging Randy Hansy show for you today. That's right. Uh, well, Trish, sir, comedian, actress, a uh, home makeover person, good friend of the show, and me is going to zoom into the show later. We got... Uh, Money to give away, more residual checks. Get ready for that later on. Um, more Troll Patrol. We got a great small town news story about swinging trailer parks. But look, we got a lot to do. Uh, I want to. I want you to know we're not just live on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. We're also regular old podcasts for your ear holes. You know what I'm saying? We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. You, you know, we're on all of it. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. Um, but the main thing is the live part. I'm very excited about the live part because anything can happen right now. Look what, oh, man. What well, how could I have done that if it wasn't live right now? And uh, we're getting bigger. We're growing a little bit every time. We're always ticking up. And that's because you guys at home are hitting that share button. And I appreciate you doing that. So I've come up with this thing because a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, see, I got the share hat. Picture of share with the arrow to remind you to hit the share button. But I'm going to go uh, above and beyond that. Because what I do to get you to share, and I know you're thinking, well, John, if I hit the share button right now, I'm going to miss, I'll have to look down, I'm going to miss what you do. Don't worry, because uh, that's why I come up with this thing. What I do is I put on this little share wig, you know what I'm saying? And I look right down the pipe of the camera, and I beg you to hit the share button. That's what I like to call the share stare. If I could make you share, I want you to do it today. Please hit that arrow button that points his way. I want you to hit the share button. I need you to hit it now. Oh, whole share stare for you, huh? Look how hard I'm trying. How's my hair? How's my share hair on my head? Looks better than your real I'll hair. I'll put the hat back on. <clears throat> well, thank you. I mean, I, <laughs> how dare you? Um, so, yeah, uh, hit the share button. I appreciate you doing that. If you didn't do it, you'll get around to it, and I appreciate it when you get around to it. All right. So uh, to let you know we're live, also another thing we do is we check your comments from time to time. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to leave the answer in the comment section. And I'm going to have my intern uh, randomly read the question and your answer. If it's funny, we'll give you a shout out on the show. Here's a question. You ever been to a key party? Mm. Do you know what that is? Leave it in the comments section. And what am I? Well, the only intern tonight, Mr. Sebastian over there checking. Look, he's double fisted. He's got two devices. He's got the uh, iPad uh, doing the Facebooks, and he's got, I don't know what that thing is, checking the YouTube. It looks like a R2-D2 
uh, Atari 5000 Commodore 67. What that's you got a, over that's there? That's a Commodore 67 from 1984. That's an 84. The original 1984 Commodore 67. It looks cool. I like the see-through glass back of it there. It looks good on camera. That's all we're looking for. We're looking good. So I appreciate you coming in and uh, taking over the intern spot. We're just we're an intern down, but we're going to survive. My man over here, Sebastian, coming in at seven feet eight inches tall. Um, good looking fella, charming. Also kind of famous. He was uh, he played basketball for the Charlotte Hornets back in the day when uh, I believe it was Kelly Trapuca, maybe Muggsy Bogues. Yeah. Was he around? Yeah, he's so he's around. good friends with them, kind of oh, famous. Good friends. Yeah, give he'll read your comments from time to time. But let me get it to the man sitting across the table right here. Another handsome fella. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He is kind of famous as well, but not well, his brother's famous. You ever seen uh Full House? Yeah. Remember John Stamos? Guy's little brother in here, Marcus Stamos. How are you? Good evening to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, you're nervous. Boys. Oh. Oof, never nervous. <laughs> it's good to see you. How are you, man? I'm great. How are you? How was your weekend? It was good. Uh, I know you were gone for the weekend off in Kentucky. What'd you call it? Kentucky. Just Kentucky. Just Kentucky. It sounded like you said a bad word. How? Something Tucky, but it sounded... Anyway, we'll get past it. Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah, Bluegrass State. Yep. I was up there doing a show with Rodney Carrington. Yeah. Yeah. In Sharpsburg, Kentucky. Sharpsburg, which is close to? Uh, it's about uh, 40 minutes outside of Lexington. In okay. between Lexington and Cincinnati, Ohio. It's in the middle of nowhere. Far enough for the time changed on you. The time changed on Rodney Carrington. Oh, yeah. It changes on everybody if you drive in or fly in. It's in a different time zone. Oh, it's everybody, not just y'all. Well, yeah. 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 It's, uh, we're in the eastern time zone. And then Kentucky is in the central time zone. Mm. Well, parts of Kentucky, I believe. Correct me on that if I'm wrong. I don't get it, but okay. Time yeah. has to change when so, you go so far. It was fantastic because I hadn't seen my boy Rodney Carrington in a long time, and he brought Nick Searcy with him, uh, who was also on the Rodney sitcom. So it was like a Rodney sitcom reunion. What did he do on the show? He I was can't. he played Barry, which was Rodney's best friend. Okay. And I played Gerald were, Bob Ridley, the, the cop. You were the uh, Barney Five. I was the Barney Five of yeah, the yeah, show, one hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. But we had a great time. Uh, this is a brand new venue that uh, we performed in called the Barnyard, and it is basically a giant barn that seats about three thousand people. There you go. We got some pictures I can show you. You want to see some pictures? All right. So here's your boy on stage at the Barnyard. Uh, that guy right there. Yep, he was very enthusiastic. Yeah. By the end of the show, his shirt was off, you know, and uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, let's just go through the pictures, Alan Jackson. There's me and Rodney and Nick Searcy. Uh, that was after the show. <laughs> Quick pick. He looks great. There it is again. Uh, but making the people laugh. It was uh, honestly, I hate doing outdoor shows, but this venue. Um, these people were just ready to laugh, dude. Yeah. People were ready to get out and do anything. You can go to the next one, the Alan Jackson. Let's just, yeah. So that's the, um, that's a view from the back. It's like a giant barn with no walls on the side of it. You see the big screens on either end? And um, yeah, it was a packed house. My God, those are big screens there. Were those 200 inch screens? On I like side? this picture right here. Go back to that one now. Oh, yeah, those are big screens. Um, look at that, dude. That's one of my favorite pictures. That's a good one. Come to me, my jungle friends. <laughs> I, that's right. I was trying to calm them down as I introduced Nick Searcy. So I went up. I got there. I drove up Friday, just chilled Friday night, and then I did the show Saturday. Woke up there. Al, I mean, uh, 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 Rodney and Nick were driving in from Nashville, and they didn't know about the time change. So See? They, they come in hot. Yeah. They were 20 minutes late. And if I'm not mistaken, the, the night before, I, it was rained out, I think. They had a show yeah. there before. So you got lucky you had some good weather. Yes. That's, yeah, good point. So that Friday night was supposed to be the first show. And that was going to be Sticks and Uncle Cracker. Yeah. That would have been a hell of a show. Uh, yeah, would have. And uh, it rained so hard, a road got washed out. They had a flash flood. So they had to cancel that show. So we were the first people to perform at this venue. Oh. And uh, it couldn't have gone better. Had a good time. Caught up with Rodney. Good to see him. Yeah, what are you looking at? You, your, you have a funny comment. Right where'd your ass go? 
Oh, I'm taking them. Uh, I've been taking them pills, dude. Oh, the noacetols. Ass loss pills. The noacetols. <laughs> yeah, I had to point it out. It's just, well, it's my not shirt there. tails covered it up. Number one. No, it's... the pockets hang a little low. My <laughs> pants was droopy that day. I think uh, I've lost a little weight. You have actually. I've gained weight, and that's a bigger shirt. <laughs> But I like I like you pick up on those little things. Just the little things yeah. I pick up on. Here I am, all excited you went and lost and proud of this picture, and now I'm worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a zit on my face? No, right not now? today. Anything else you want to point out? I got any boogers in my beard? No. Okay. Boogers. Sorry. <laughs> I just uh, noticed it. At the, I mean, I've seen this. Let's go to the next one, the Alan Jackson. Let's see if he can make fun of something else. Uh, I believe is that all the pictures. Okay. All right. Good. Well, that was honestly a great time, but you didn't miss anything because I had to, you know, I was wanting to do a lot of catching up with Rodney. So uh, it was great. So thank you, uh, everyone who showed up and packed the barnyard in Sharpsburg, Kentucky. Uh, next gig will be in Atlanta. I'll be at the punchline in Atlanta. Uh, that will be August 12, 13, and 14. You can get tickets at countryish.com, click on tour dates. There they are, Atlanta, the punchline. I'll be there August 12, 13, and 14. Come on with it. Um, so that was fun. Real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to Mimosa and Popsicle. Because as I'm talking to people right now, it is August the 3rd. We're live, anything could happen. Like what is. I mean, you knew that was going to happen. I, yeah, I, well, it's live. I couldn't stop it. Predicted it. Um, but August the 5th will be my mom and dad's anniversary. How many years? I'm going to guess. <laughs> so you're, I know how old you are. What you're, if I don't know the answer? Well, we'll stop talking about it. Because <laughs> you should know the answer. It's a minute. It's around, there's, you, you know the been, ballpark. It's over 50. Yeah. I think. That's, that's good enough for me. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's bittersweet. Because he's still paralyzed on his left side. He's still in a skilled nursing facility. He just had his teeth, upper teeth, removed. So it's not a great time. And he used to, what he used to do, and by the way, maybe we'll start this. For you guys watching at home, if you want to do something super sweet for my mom and my dad, Mimosa and Popsicle, uh, you could do what my dad used to do with my mom. They would, for their anniversary, this is super romantic and sweet, they would dress up. My dad would put on a tuxedo, and my mom would put on a nice evening gown. And they would go to Walgreens, and they would pick out a card. They would take time going down the aisle, picking out the perfect card for each other, and exchange it right there in the aisle, and then read it to them, and then put it back on the shelves. And so they didn't it. have to spend any money. Perfect. Are you serious? Sw- yeah. Yep, that's a true thing. That is fantastic. That is super romantic and thrifty, and it's so David that. and Betty Reap right there. Yeah. So why don't you do that? Why don't you guys do that? If you want to do something sweet for my mom and my dad, go to Walgreens, pick out a card, anniversary card, and read it. And put it at the Country Ish Facebook fan page or this this very page right here, and we'll share them next week. That sounds pretty cool, huh? Yep. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, also, before we move on, I'd like to make a correction. Last week, one of our new mm. interns, Wes P. Right, we're all familiar with Wes. Yeah. Junior. No, yeah, Wes P. Junior. junior. Is he a junior? Well, he's a junior and intern. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. made partner yet. He's still <laughs> way down there. He's down the line. Yeah. Long well, he, training. Screw, he screwed up. Yeah. Now, you, on the other hand, you are double. You're doing twice the job. I'm doing double. Hey, let's get rid of these intern. Listen, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to people. Save your I, money. Let I, Sean do it. Just save the money. So far, any interesting comments? Yes. Oh, oh crap! Let's get. We let's have get to some. It. Uh, we got some people talking about this key thing. The key thing. Key party. What the do you key know? Key party. Yeah, they think it's a swingers party, John. Well, that might Are they be correct? right. That, I think you're right. It could be right. We're going to get to it at the very end of the show. So stay tuned. The small town. Yeah, stay tuned. The small town news story has to do with swingers, and you're going to love it. Uh, also, I got money to give away. Don't forget. And Trish, sir, and we got lots more show. But Wes P, I have to correct him because what was trending last week was uh, Simone Biles in the Olympics and how she pulled out, you know, because uh, she had a men- she wasn't mentally prepared or 
Something was going on, right? Sometimes it's a good idea to pull out. It is. I was, thank you, Mark. I yeah, was going to say that. You know I mean? <laughs> Always <laughs> rely on my boys. No, Alan's mad. I looked at Alan just then, and <laughs> no, no, I feel no. I feel bad for Pulling saying that. Pulling out. He was so disappointed in you that. You pull out of events is what you're talking about. Yeah, or, or anything. Yeah, if you're yeah. not mentally ready for it. Okay. Yes. So, um, correct. <laughs> but I asked Wes. I said, well, how many? Because they called her the greatest of all time, Simone Biles. I said, well, how many has she won? I'm like, you know, you guys look it up and tell me before we start labeling her the greatest of all time. I said, Wes, how many? Google it. And Wes goes, uh, uh, zero. She's won zero. I'm like, I went with it because I trusted my intern in that moment. But he was incorrect. Wes, come on, man. You got to get better to Googling if you want to be an intern for country-ish. So I'm going to correct him. Simone Biles is widely considered the greatest gymnast of all time, the GOAT. She's won a total of seven Olympic medals as of So that's today. a correction from last week. Yeah, it went from zero to seven. Another correction from last week would be when you said that Waylon Jennings yeah, <laughs> thank you. wrote the, the greatest country music song of all time. Yeah, it was not Waylon Jennings. It was not Waylon Jennings. It was... Charlie Pride. No, no. No, no David no. Allen Coe. Well, no, but he, no. he goes, here's a song that my good friend Steve Goodman wrote Goodman, this song. Steve Goodman, yes. You're right. and, I, and I said it's not the perfect, but he added a verse. Yes. But I was wrong about who added wrong. the verse. It was not David Allen Coe. It was Waylon Jennings. Or did Correct. I get that wrong just again, just now? And I also have another correction for you that yeah, you've already ahead. missed today. I, I, I deserve this. <laughs> that you've already missed today. You told go me ahead. I need to be publicly flogged for Your this. parents have been married a grand total of 54 years, just 54 so you years. know. Let's just shout How out to that. that. Did mom just put that up there? Betty Reap with the comment. Uh, see, mom, I knew it was over 50. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that, Betty. But yep. I thought you were going to do another correction. There's another one? Yeah, yeah. It's a big one. I accidentally said, that I drive a Toyota. And well, I don't. I drive a Honda. We didn't want to bring that up, but yeah, yes, you did. Say so that. I apologize. You said that last week? No, apparently not. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on. Uh, those are your corrections. Honda corrections. Yeah. Is over. Yeah. We're done with the corrections. Anything you'd like to add for your week? How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Uh, I feel like I just talk about me this whole time. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. We're just merely here to take up oh, space. So you're probably asking, like, what's up with this book? I was going to ask you, what's that? What's up with that book? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look at this. So the guy who wrote this book, his name is Shane Chastain. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool name. That yeah. sounds like a great porn name, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shane Chastain. <laughs> Uh, he's from jo- Jonesboro, Arkansas. He is Rodney Carrington's piano player. and He has his own piano player. Well, yeah. Rodney plays songs. Yeah, and he's yeah. got a piano guy. Okay. Oh, it's a whole big deal when Rodney shows up. Okay. I mean, it's like a band. There's, a, there's like an 18-wheeler that pulls up and has the load in. I mean, he's got a team. So this guy was there So in he's the piano Kentucky. guy, yeah. So okay. I was talking to him about my sound cues for my show, and we got to I got to know him, and uh, he writes a mystery, uh, murder mystery stuff. And this is one of his books. I bought it. It's called A David and Trait Mystery of What You Hear. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to give him a shout-out because not only is he a funny, cool dude, uh, and not only is he good friends with Rodney Carrington who plays piano, but he also runs Rodney's Facebook page. <laughs> so... Shane yeah. and Rodney. Yeah. Look, here, I'll just talk to Shane because Rodney don't mess with this stuff. Shane, uh, let's 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 hook this up. I want to talk more about this on Rodney's page as well. <laughs> or he could come on the show and talk about his book and, and multicast the Facebook. So he has to talk Rodney into that. Yeah, I think Rodney would be okay. Maybe he'd just do it and not even tell Rodney because he didn't even look at it. He wouldn't know. <laughs> He's so big he didn't even look at his own Facebook. Yeah. So anyway. That's uh, also what's up. Um, all right, we got to move on. I think it's time, dude. Are you feeling it? Oh, it's 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 that time. Are you feeling anything? My hands are getting warm from this. What's wood. going on? <laughs> I'm feeling it, dude. I got one more. There's twice. I got one in me. It's time. The Alan Jackson. Oh yeah! Look at here now. We're doing it. Check this out. <laughs> Don't mess with me and my troll patrol. It went away. <laughs> That's okay. Hey! Oh my God. 
Steve Goodman did not write that song. Neither did uh, 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 Merle Haggard Jennings. or Waylon Jennings. So Google who who wrote the song. Uh, Trump, John, John Reed wrote the song. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Creative. Um, someone Google who wrote Highway Patrol song. All right. Let's, let's get to the Troll Patrol because what I do in this segment, I'm a verified page on Facebook, whatever. Got the blue check blue mark. Blue check, yeah. No biggie. That's thanks to you guys, and I appreciate it. So what I do is I follow, as this page, I follow other verified pages, and I just see what they say in the hopes that they'll say something stupid or incorrect, and I can correct them, or just a subtle little jibby-jabby, you know? I don't, I'm not vicious about it. I'm not punching down at people who aren't verified. I'm punching up at people who are verified. Delta Airlines is verified. And so I trolled them this week and it wasn't even a big deal. Not a big one. But I thought, you know, I was busy this weekend with Rodney and everything else. Um, But I thought I would do this one. And I like Delta Airlines, by the way. I have no beef with Delta Airlines. That, to me, is one of the best ones. American and Delta to me is one of the best ones and it gets it gets worse from there. But Delta Airlines put this up there. They said uh your loyalty has never been more important and we're committed to earning it. And I thought well that's nice. So I'll leave a comment on that. And I wrote back, "Thank you. I appreciate that. And I also like your slogan, keep climbing." Is that why COVID-19 is now called the Delta variant? Because the numbers keep climbing? I think that might be bad for business. (laughs) So (laughs) that kind of sucks. Remember, I got a joke about how Corona, the beer company, uh, was upset that they were calling it the coronavirus. And now they're going after Delta Airlines. Next is Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. The, the, um. And Omega Moo. Oh. The The sororities or fraternities. (laughs) <laughs> Paternities? <laughs> Paternity? Yes. Oh, yeah. Paternity. Yes. That's so you got like sororities and you got paternities. paternities. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. Um, I don't know if you're kidding. I, I can't tell yeah. sometimes if you actually make a mistake or if you're joking. I'm, I'm totally kidding. On what that. is it? You know it's what frat. It. Yeah, it's fraternity. Fraternity. But that, yeah. you did it so well. It's me, man. That's, that's how I roll. Right. That's how I do things. You can tell what's on your mind. Huh? I do. It's what comes to my brain first. Pr- paternity test. Paternity test. Yeah. That's interesting. They have paternity tests to see if you're pregnant. We should have fraternity tests to see if you're a douchebag. Huh? Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding unless, you know, I don't care. Anyway, Delta Airlines posted that. I responded with that because that does suck for them. You know, And they don't want to be associate, associated associated <laughs> with the Delta variant. And so it got 74 reactions, nothing crazy. I did it last minute. Uh, and I'll read some of your comments. Louise Martinez wrote LMFAO. You know what that means? Yep. And then Brenda Sachs wrote, nailed it. Shane Flint wrote, I hope they don't change their slogan to continue soaring, like the numbers for COVID or whatever, or, or a Delta is what they're calling it now. Uh, Brian Mahan said, it's about time my medallion status got extended. Yes, that's uh, your medallion is what, you know, you earn miles that you become a medallion member. Uh, Keith Deringer, or Derringer, he just put a meme up that says, Saying you just, he just said, you magically show up everywhere. Are you my stalker? Apparently, yeah. Because uh, um, I guess he sees what I post all the time, and it must be annoying to him. But that's part of the troll patrols. I do that. So Delta, my apologies. Not really. Um, I wonder if they have a case on their hand. Who would you sue? Like, what if they changed the name of coronavirus or COVID-19 to Mark Hunt? Wouldn't that ruin your life? No, I would love that. That'd draw a lot of attention to me. And you would love that. Yeah, of course. What if they changed it to, to Sebastian? Yeah. The Kelly Sebastian, Tropuka's yeah, best the, friend. I mean, I'm I mean, would you be, I mean, honestly, plague. that would suck, right? Uh, you wouldn't want your, a virus named after you? It's, I've been called a virus before, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you are a virus. I mean, well, look what happened to Lou Gehrig. 
They yeah. named a disease after that him. That is bad, yeah. Uh, you don't want to be it, associated with that. He got, yeah, he killed him, I think. It well, did kill They changed it, yeah. Oh. <laughs> they got him. <laughs> that That's why they, why they called it there. That's what happened. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that is my point. <laughs> So Delta, I feel for you, man. They should name it. Keep soaring. They should. You know what they should change it to? Frontier Airlines. Uh-huh. Oh, what's that? The, what's that? Is that the cheap? The cheap airlines? What's the one? Spirit. Spirit? They should Frontier. Name it. Change Allegiant. It to Spirit. Southwest has gotten a little better. Yeah. Uh, what's that other Allegiant. one? Allegiant. <laughs> you yeah, know what's worse? Allegiant. What's Allegiant. worse? Allegiant. I think the worst one right now, in my opinion, is Spirit Airlines. The one you put us on last year. Yes. Because my brother demanded it. He did. Uh, he was very adamant about it. But that's he, that's neither here nor there. You got us there. It's okay. <laughs> Even though it was delayed 17 yeah. hours. We... Um, well, let's move on to the next segment. That brings me to, front, speaking of Delta and Frontier Airlines, it brings me to the next segment. Uh, this one is brought to you by Hendrick Honda of Hickory. Hendrick! Hendrick! <laughs> Hendrick, Hendrick, <laughs> Honda of Hickory. Are you in the mood or the market for a new car? Check out Hendrick Honda of Hickory. They got all kinds of vehicles. In fact, my boo-boo's mom just got uh, a new vehicle over there. Did you get a bird dog fee out of that? You know what a bird dog fee is. So when I you first heard, somebody... I haven't heard a bird dog. I haven't heard it called that in a it's long, long time. It's now called a Philly link. Philly oh, link. reference. Yeah, yeah reference fee, a.k.a. Yeah. Okay, yeah. bird Referral. dog fee. Yeah. Referral fee. But I like bird dog. Hey, man, you get somebody to come to me, I'll give you a bird dog fee. No, no I, I should have asked for that. You should have got $50 I'll for a talk tank to, of I'm going to talk to Jody about it, but her mother loves her new vehicle, and you'll love your new vehicle, too. Just check out Hendrick Honda of Hickory. Get yourself a new vehicle. You'll thank me later. So this segment is brought to you by them. Uh, and what I do in this segment, Marcus, is I go to your Twitter, see? I click on the hashtag button. That's what my daddy would have called it. Hashtag. Hashtag button. And Keith. then I, I see what Keith would have called it that. And I look at like, what's trending? What are people talking about? You know? And then I talk about that. You know? Thank you, Al. Whew. I was stalling for a long time. It's a segment that I like to call... Ooh, it's the best trends. Here's what you're talking about. All right. Hashtag Frontier. Frontier Airlines is a trending, dude, because of something that had happened, you see. An out-of-control passenger on a Frontier Airlines flight from Philadelphia to Miami last Saturday had to be duct taped (laughs) to his seat after he allegedly (laughs) groped two flight attendants' breasts and took a swing at the third. So um, there, there you go. That's is. There's your friendly skies with Frontier. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like, should we play that whole thing, the Alan Jackson from the start? I mean, I, I, I've i not really looked at it the whole way because I can't, this stuff pisses me off. I hate these kind of douchebags. This dude who did this, you know, I, I, I'm glad they duct taped his ass. I'm in, the, I'm in the sky all the time. I hate people who start crap in the air. So let's watch it, the Alan Jackson. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> oh, that's the duct tape part. Start in the beginning. If you can rewind it somehow. Um, there at the very beginning. Oh. Look, uh, he's yelling at people. Cussing. Oh, no, using the Lord's name in vain. Oh. You got duct tape his mouth, put a dang bar of soap in there while you're at it. He's so an out of control uh, passenger. This is about yeah. <clears throat> if you're flying straight from Philadelphia to Miami, hey, yeah, that's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what airlines you're on. Just oh, saying. he's swinging. Fighting one of the flight attendants. <clears throat> and they come and they grab him. You know, they got him. And then I love this. Gotta do what you gotta do, man. I wonder how they got him to sit still during... It looks like he's cooperating. <laughs> like, maybe he, he ran out of in. energy. He's like, whatever. No moss, I give. And, just, and then people are laughing. And like, cool, look at all the cameras popping up. Wow. World star. There you go. And then they're like, we'll give you some breathing room here. They put the mask Hopefully back on Hopefully he left a little him. hole for his mouth. You know, <laughs> well, that was COVID. You got you to wear the mask <laughs> the whole time. That's true. 
So apparently what happened was, um, so yeah, this dude, the flight from Philly, he was, uh, you, you can see him sh- shouting at people. He's cussing people. Um, I'm trying to see where, yeah. When the plane landed, he was arrested uh, by police on three counts of battery. Uh, the arrest report states that Barry, this is how it started, spilled a drink on himself. So he's probably already messed up on something. Yeah, been in the bar. and maybe a, who knows what else. So he spilled a drink on himself. Then he went to the bathroom to change. And he came out of the bathroom shirtless on an airplane. And then, uh, hang on, turn it off. So then he comes out shirtless and uh, started wandering the aisles for 15 minutes, molesting two crew members. On their, you know, their boobs, and uh, and then the third one he he punched. So look, people, this is why I don't like to fly anymore. I used to fly a lot. I drove to Kentucky because I had to weigh. Like, all right, so it might be a six to seven hour drive, but then if I fly, this is what's going on now. And uh, you know, you've got the, the mask you have to wear the whole time. So I'm weighing all these options. Plus, I got a new car. Which makes it better to drive. So from where? From Hickory to uh, Sharpsburg, but I got the car from Hendrick Honda of Hickory. That's what you meant. Yeah. So yeah, uh, settle down, right people. Settle down, Marcus. What would you have done in this situation? If Had being, you seen that happen? <clears throat> I would have. Uh, I'd have jumped in and helped. I believe I would have helped with the duct tape and made sure he had ample breathing room. Or <laughs> I'd have like. No, we would have taped his mouth up and I took my finger and put it right there where he could breathe a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, but, what a douchebag. I think, uh, what was his name, too? Because he had a douchey name. Even his name was douchey. Um, I see a lot oh, of this. Here's going his name. On now. This is like total. And he's making white people look bad, by the way. Check this out. This is his name Maxwell Barry. Maxwell. 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 Yeah. Name Nerd alert. The, the worst coffee ever. But yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> I got, yeah, that's good. Ever. That's true. Yeah, the worst part of getting up, up in the air is getting the, groped by a Maxwell. Anyway, that's Folgers actually. But. Is it Folgers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like it. I like it how he is. I have your, no ass. No ass. <laughs> and I don't your, know my coffee. You know <laughs> <laughs> Keeps you ground. Uh, well, I was coffee. singing it in my head, and that's why I knew it. So uh, yeah, so he's groping people. In the air with his shirt off. Hey, uh, Max will chill out next time. Yeah. yeah, that's your that's what's that was what's trending. Hashtag frontier. Speaking of groping, what was also trending was Cuomo. New York Governor <laughs> Andrew Cuomo. I can't say his name without sounding drunk. Cuomo. Is it Cuomo? Cuomo. Yeah. Deny. He denies sexual har- harassment claims. Detailed in state attorney general investigation, but I think he's I think he's going to have to resign. I think Biden asked him to step down. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. But we don't do politics or pandemics, so we're just going to move on. But I just noticed those two things were trending at yeah, the same time. Yeah, one and the same. Yeah, lots of lots of handsy groping is going on. Um, so you know, this podcast also comes out as an audio only podcast on Fridays, and that would be August the sixth. And there's an international day. You know how I like to do the international days? Yeah. So guess what August the 6th will be? Anybody want to guess? International Beer Day. That's right. Hey, uh, Brian, do you mind reaching that? Give me that cooler right there. I got some beers. Thank you, brother. I got beers for everybody right here. They're ice cold, buddy. That's Putting it on cute. ice. What is this? It's a ginger this beer. This is an imported beer. Uh, here you go, buddy. Take one, pass it around. Uh, we're going to celebrate International Beer Day up in here. The first Friday in Cheers. August brings a toast to ales, lagers, and pilsners that put the international in International Beer Day. Perhaps it's a porter or a Belgian in your glass. Whether yours is fermented or not, dark or pale, hoppy, bitter, smooth, raise your mug. Here we go, International Beer Day. So I went and picked this up uh, for International Beer Day. What did you this decide, is interesting. What did you decide on this kind for? Well, thank you. That's a good question. Why did I choose this import? You, why did you? Somebody it's... gave it to you. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I do these things 
I like to have a theme. How long have you known me? A long time. No, no. This has nothing to do with you. Oh, oh. it's all about you. It, I mean, but, but I like how he tried to make it about him just now. Now, there's four other people in this room, brother. True, true. You ain't got to drink nothing. I'll drink your old I do need a ball opener. Though. I was going to say. So, uh, hey, check this out. You I knew you were going to say that. Okay. Yeah. Give me here, Alan. The new case here that now has the bottle opener attached. These are going to be available on johnreap.com. Very soon. Oh! Check this out. For those times Wait where you sec. thought you didn't need a beer opener. Wow. That's what you do. They're wow. Pass that around. Wow. Go ahead and pop yours up. We never run, we never run a live broadcast. Here we go. Here. You never cease to amaze me, Sean. Hand me, me this one. Thank hand you. me that one. We'll just get her going, brother. Thank you very much. Whew. 1995. So, good. Good oh, one, JohnReeb.com coming in the future. Let me see that. Hold that thing up again. So it's, it's, got, a, it's, it's a cell also, phone uh, it, yeah, it has case. case got that and you pull this out the back yeah. of it. 22 it, different things. We need something screwed or unscrewed. Uh, if I need to cut you, it's got a knife on it. Hey. You need to measure stuff. That's yeah. whatever you need. That's it's the got Rambo a Rambo knife. Of, it's got uh, a two inch ruler on it for Mark. Whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> it is the it's the for Rambo knife distance. of cell phone cases. Yeah. Yeah. So you can get that. So Marcus, I know you're about to make this about you, <laughs> but I like to make things about everyone, mm-hmm. not just you or just me. Everyone likes. I have this the show in mind. I'm wearing a green shirt. It's green. What do we got coming up? Swingers and trailer parks. What yep. happens when you do STDs? Crabbies. Crabbies. So it's called Crabbies. You tied it all together. And it's also a ginger beer. I know. That's yeah. why I... And I'm not sure... Where is this from? Oh, gosh. Someone, someone find out where that's from. It's real ginger seeped up to six weeks. It's 4.8% alcohol. It's called Crabbies. Well, it's imported from somewhere. It's got the word... Oh, it's from the UK. Oh. Happy, happy beer day. Here, cheers, cheers, everybody. Buddy. Happy international. Let's just taste it. I did. You already tasted it's it. It's good. I did. Oh, you, you don't did? like it? No it's one, great. No I like it. No one wanted to wait but... on me, huh? Oh, okay. okay. Cool. Mm. To my favorite ginger. Oh, boy. That's good, nice. huh? It's good. good. I actually do like that. It's very, it's very gingery. Very gingery. You can get a six-pack on this on johnreeb.com coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait. A Moscow Mule, they use these, don't they? The ginger beer is made with a Moscow Mule, is that Sounds right? right? No. No, no. Yeah. No, it's not at all. I think it's, g- vodka. it's vodka and ginger. Thank you. And vodka and ginger beer, yeah. Someone Google is that. It? Hey, okay. um, Sebastian, because he's saying no immediately, like yeah. he knows this yes. for a fact. I'm pretty a sure Moscow he's wrong. Mule? Look up what is, what is in a Moscow Mule. And if it's ginger beer, you have to chug that whole thing, dude, because you are um, quick to tell me, no. It's not. No, it's not. It's like you know for sure. You don't know. I have nothing. these. I have these words. All right. Well, yeah. you Google that. Uh, I will remind everyone to um, leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, do you like ginger beer? Do you like key parties? Leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Check out the Country Ish Facebook fan page from time to time. We're still organizing the dating game. So if you want to play the dating game, let me know. On the Country Ish Facebook fan page. Um, also, do you have a talent? Uh, we're going to have a talent show eventually. We're going to get around to these things, but we need people to submit their talent on the Country Ish Facebook fan page. Sebastian, what do you have for me? Ladies and gentlemen, the ingredients for the traditional Moscow Mule. Please read them 1.5 ounces of vodka. Check. 0.75 ounces of fresh lime juice. Check. Topped off with the wonderful, beautiful ginger beer. Mm. Hmm. Well, you, spoke, I, I, you spoke with such confidence. But I've seen people make it without the beer. Mm. I think there's. I think you do it both then ways. Then you saw, see people do it incorrectly. Yeah. Uh, that's apparently. cool. All right. Well, look, doing. I'm not going to make you chug that whole thing because I know you'll have an allergic reaction. Whew, that one sip got me. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let, let's move on. We're already like 40 minutes into the show, and we haven't even got to money to give away. We've got Trish Sir zooming in at a great small town news story. Um are you in a good mood? You want to give some money away? Let's do it, man. Let's Look at here. What do I got in my hand? Hold, hold them up, dude. Look at this. How many do we got? Huh? Come Look on. at these. We got Screen Actors Guild residual checks, and I can't wait to give one of these away to one of my callers. And real quick, last week, we had a little bit of controversy. Samantha Dong Kingston won last week, right? 
And then we got her in the show. I said, congratulations. What are you going to do with all that cash? And she said, you know what? You donate that money to go to your dad. Yep. I want to use that money to buy a milkshake for your popsicle. And I said, thank you, Samantha. You don't have to do that. Are you sure? She goes, yes. I said, cool. I'm going to do that. Like, I, in my brain, I'm going to take that money. I'm going to buy my dad a milkshake. But in the meantime, I thought, like, why not go ahead and give the check to someone? So I got the second person in there that was the next closest. And I told her I'd send it to her. And then I went home that night, and my mom was like, I think Samantha wanted it. Like, she was worried that we hurt Samantha's feelings, and I never want to do that. So, Samantha, let me know. If you want this check from last week, I'll send it to you, and I'll give the other girl a different check. I got tons of these. They're, they're, they're not a big deal. So I just, But I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. If you want the check, let me know. I'll send it to you. But we got new checks in the meantime, right? Yep. So here's what, here's what the game is all about. I've done some acting in my day. You know this. Heard of Rodney you. sitcom, yep. Harold and Kumar movies, sitcoms. There's something dangling, right? Oh, it's the share hair. It's a share. Sorry, hair. it was bugging me. No, I, I kind of saw it in my <laughs> peripheral. I thought maybe it was a, 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 a granddaddy long leg. I thought it was just your hair. <laughs> you missed one. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Sorry. Um, if, you, if you ever see anything else, just go for it. Hair, side of your Hairs, nose, boogers. Boogers, ear, glasses, ear hair. zip. You know yeah. um, so I've done some acting. I get paid residual checks, and I thought I'd make a game out of it. You know, What, what I do in this is I, uh, I open the check. I tell you what it's for, how it's airing. You make a guess. Call into the show. I think there might be a phone number down here, right? Is there? Yeah. Check out that phone number. Call that phone number. And then Ginger Beer got me. Call that phone number. We're going to take four random phone calls. And the closest person to the amount wins the check. But first, we're going to do some in house guesses. You know, you at home, you can read my poker face and you can decide whether or not, you know, gauge what your guess will be based on their guesses in the room. It is a game. <laughs> That we like to call How Much Is That Screen Actors Guild Residual Check 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 Very nice Yeah Job right. So here I'll, I'll put that one in there With that one Mix them up Just pick one at random I'll open it and we'll uh, we'll see what we got here. All right, I'm gonna open it down here where you can't see it. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. It's gonna be good. Mm. Uh, I, you know what it's for already. Eastbound and down. Eastbound and down on HBO. Getting a lot of those lately. A lot of people's yeah. watching that apparently. It's a great show. I got to get some HBO Max so I can catch up or watch it. Have you not seen them all? You should. I've for seen, yourself, it's great. Yeah, you I've should. seen I think I've seen Probably them. Probably ought to ask for John's password. They basically... <laughs> <laughs> do you have HBO Max? I've already got his Shut job. up. Okay. I do. I'm not giving him the password. <laughs> I mean, my all passwords you got devices. already. I mean, you yeah. got all of them. <laughs> now, I mean, how, how many about, passwords do you yeah. have? <laughs> I mean, of other, not just me, of other people. I'm constantly worried that you're going to, like, we're going to have to do a reset where I have to actually put the password in. Every time I log into <laughs> Netflix. So I've got your Netflix, <laughs> yeah. and I've got your uh, Prime. Amazon Prime. <laughs> Amazon Prime. I think you've been it. ordering a lot of packages off that, too. <laughs> Saving so oh, much Oh, yeah, that's money. what the, you ordered this book, didn't you? No, I would oh. never do that, but uh, don't ever reset your password. You know, I'm thinking ahead. about, like, when I go to Netflix <laughs> and it says, welcome back, John and Ella. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a kid's version. My daughter of would, it would kill her, man. Don't do that to her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, look, this is for uh, one episode of Eastbound and Down, hmm. chapter 29 again. This one's for video and DVD and pay TV. Yeah. And it is one check. Marcus Stamos. Marcus Stamos. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to be. Look, you got a lot. <laughs> I yeah, got too many things going on here. Yeah, I'm just start hitting one. Thing. Hit one at random. Don't even look at it. Just hit one. Oh, oh boy! Yeah, that ginger beer just goes right <laughs> through me. 
Okay, you ready um, for my guess? How much is the screen? I got you. Still check. Go go with seven dollars and seventy seven cents. Okay, old old triple sevens. Yeah, huh? we'll go triple seven. Let's say it together. Seven dollars and seventy seven cents. Yep. Seven dollars and seventy seven cents. I like your mouth from side to side. How I did that? Say it like that. So your facial expression on the seven seventy seven. Oh, let me do it again. All right, you ready? Seven dollars and seventy seven cents. That's what I thought. It's not good. Okay. It's um. You're way too low. Mm -hmm. Way too Mm -hmm. low. What's your guess, everybody? I'm not Way too, too high. <laughs> Sebastian, let's go to you. Well, how much, Scott Jack? It's unfortunate we're not making any money here, but I'm going to say $5.65. Cents. Closer. Hmm. Closer. Yep. If I, if I had to pick between the two of you, you'd win the check right now. Thank you. The Alan Jackson, which, would you like to make a guess? Since we don't have, we only have one intern today. Do you want to make a guess? And you're on the microphone. Um, yeah, I'll do um, four dollars and twenty three cents. Okay. Mm. He he he's mm. like, you know how they, you one up you, he one under you. Yeah. And he's closer than all of you. So it's heading the right direction. Know that at home. I had to start somewhere. This might be one of the lowest ones I had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, in a minute. We should have guessed yeah. seven. In a minute. But um, all right, so if, so that's the best guess is the Alan Jacksons, uh, Mr. Jackson. Whenever you're ready, let's just go to the phone lines. Yeah, we'll, you got plenty of people. So we'll get somebody in here. We'll take their guess and we'll get to know these people, um, and we'll get them in the room and we'll we'll play the game. Let's see if they can do better. Hi, John Reap here. Who am I talking to? You're talking to your old friend Roseanne Henshaw. Roseanne Henshaw. <laughs> Roseanne Henshaw. All right, Roseanne, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, tomorrow is my 41, 41st wedding anniversary. Wow. No kidding. Did you know that my parents' wedding anniversary is the... Yeah, uh, yeah. They said... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hello. That's why I brought I it up. You don't. Eh? <laughs> well, I'm congratulations in advance. Congratulations. Yeah. How, do yeah, you guys have a, a fun tradition that you do for your anniversary? No, not really. I mm. mean, it's, that it's sounds like, romantic. Been there, you know, been, been there, done that. <laughs> gotcha. Well, what's the secret to a long marriage? Uh, basically, just don't change each other and. You know, take the the highs and the lows, and ride that roller coaster and enjoy the ride. Wow, wow. that's really good. Thank you, Roseanne. Wish it was always like that, Roseanne. I appreciate that. Forty one years. That's great. Um, and what yep. is what does yep. the husband do? Uh, he's medically retired. He's medically retired. Okay, kind of like uh, he was, Simone he Biles. Was a, he was a twenty year. He was twenty years in the military. I was one year and a half in the military. Okay. Um, and that's where we met. Well, thank you and for your service, Roseanne Henshaw. Thank now, you. Now, well, one of the many things I love about you is your sound effects. Do you have a new sound effect for yep. us today? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's see this one. Hmm. Hmm. Hang on. Roseanne, do not tell us what it is. We like to guess, okay? okay? Yeah. Now, Stamos, would you like to go first? Yeah, I'll go. That's definitely a squirrel. Hmm. That's a very good guess. And well, see, she, she buzzed this, you. Now, she fast. buzzed you, and I just asked her not to tell us. <laughs> not to tell us. I know, but I didn't say what it is. Yeah, but now I know he's wrong, and that's going to affect my guess. I'm pretty sure we've heard this before, though. I think the same <laughs> sound we've heard before. Oh, no. And you I think guess Roseanne's squirrel. repeating no. sound effects? Yeah, she's... she's mm. I no, hope not. No, she no, had a She had a joke? I heard this, <laughs> I heard this on, on, on Jeopardy. You heard this on Jeopardy. Okay. So yeah. that is... Um, Oh, oh, go ahead, oh, Sebastian. I know exactly what this is. Go ahead. Is. I'll let you go. This is the sound you make after 41 years of marriage. You uh, just do that. <laughs> oh, kissy uh, face. That's it. She liked that. Yeah. Is that correct? It, it, it's, it's what they call that. No, is that wall bear. Isn't that like that wall barrier? Um, mm. I was going to say a sugar glider. 
What's a sugar glider? A sugar glider was what I was going to say. That's some tiny little monkeys with the big eyes. It's like a little... And they just jump and they kind of glide. Sugar glider. Sugar glider. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, People no, have no. those pants. So I was way off. Roseanne Henshaw, how much yeah. is the Screen Actors Guild residual check? Okay. Um, I'm going to say... $3.41. Mmm, very good. Roseanne, that's... And I'm a- donating my check to whoever is behind me. Okay. Well, we don't know if you've won yet. <laughs> yeah, we I don't know. know. There's three oh, other she's, guesses. She's passing it on like you do at McDonald's. I know. Oh, I know. Geez. And you want to know what, it, what the sound was? Well, I guessed Sugar Glider. You said... Squirrel. You said... No. Oh, what was it? No. It was a dolphin. Oh. oh. I, I thought she told us like a Woody, a Woody Woolberry or something. I don't, I don't know what you were saying. <laughs> he didn't say. <laughs> nope, nope. Mm. Mm. Dolphin. Dolphin. <laughs> okay, do it again. Yeah. Let's Now let's picture a dolphin. Do it again, Roseanne. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Now. I kind of see it. Yeah. Good one. Kinda Maybe like a little baby dolphin. <laughs> a newborn dolphin. Yeah. A newborn yeah. dolphin. Okay, <laughs> Roseanne. So you, your guess was $3 and... 41 cents from my 41 years. Congratulations again. That's a pretty good guess. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Did you get, have you gotten the check? I, I sent you a check. Have you gotten it yeah, yet? Yeah, I finally, yeah, yeah, I finally got it. That's why I want to donate this one to to the second place winner. If you win. All right, put it on hold, the Allen Jackson. Let's mm-hmm. go to the next caller and see if they can do better. Uh, appreciate the call. I hope you're doing well. Let's get the new, hi, John Reap here. Who am I talking to? This is Tony Welburn. Tony Weldon. Well done. Welburn. 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 Wellborn. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, Tony. We'll in a Tony Welburn calling from uh, Alabama. Oh, Alabama. Alabama. War Tide. Roll Eagle. Which is yeah, it? I don't. Uh, hey, it's Roll Tide. Oh, yeah. yeah, I confused you. You, you got to go with Roll Tide, man. You got to go said, with what works. I said War Tide, Roll <laughs> Eagle. Yeah, yeah, well. I like to mix the two yeah, up well, and confuse people, piss everybody we, off. We don't expect much from people in North Carolina about How football. How dare you? Know, you. Hey, hey, hey. Hang up on him. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. Uh, so where are you calling from? Yeah. What part of Alabama? Spruce Pine. Spruce Pine. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I have no idea about that. Yeah, yeah. Spruce Pine, Alabama. There's a Sounds Spruce Pine North Carolina. I bet it smells Carolina great. There is, there is a Spruce Pine, North Carolina. There is a Spruce Pine. And yeah. this, it's and, a great and smell. And it's funny because a lot of towns around Spruce Pine, Alabama have the same towns around uh, North Carolina. For instance? Uh, you got a Bear Creek, Alabama, a Bear Creek, North Carolina, and it's kind of weird. Is yeah. there a Hickory, it's Alabama? Like copied, y'all. Do you know? Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't know about a Hickory, Alabama. I know there's well, one. Let in me Google her right now. Sebastian's going to Google that. I know. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, is it Tony? But I, I do forgot. know there is one in Mississippi. So. Okay. Was it Tony? Is his name? Okay. Uh, Tony, yeah. thank you for calling. What do you do for a living, brother? Uh, I work at a lawn service. That me and my parents we cut grass. Mm. Okay. Well, I bet business is booming right now. I mean, it's the summertime. Man, right? when we Yeah, when we can stay out of the rain. Right. Well, you know, rain we, yeah, makes corn. corn. Corn makes whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey makes my, my baby, baby a little, little bit frisky. A little frisky. Fricks, frisky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. Sebastian, yes. Yes. Uh Hickory Pickens County, Alabama. Oh, there is. There is a Hickory. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, it's, uh yeah, it's about almost three hours away from here. <laughs> but there is one and I figure there's a Hickory or Hickton or Hickville in just about every state. It's a very popular word. Like oh, yeah. spruce pines. Yeah. It must smell like Christmas there all the time. <laughs> yeah? Um a lot, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tony. How much is gotcha? It is three dollars and sixty four cents. Wait a minute, what did Roseanne guess? Three forty forty one. She guessed three forty one. So he went up a little bit. Yeah. Three sixty four. Just a little. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, good guess. We're gonna put you on hold, and we'll find out if you are the closest. We have two more people to get to. We're taking four phone calls at random. We got the third on the line right now. John Reap here. Who am I talking to? My name's Brock Kerr. 
Mm, can you turn it up a Brock's? little? Brock. Yeah, we're turning. Bryce or Brock? Kerr. Oh, man. Do it again, brother. I'm sorry. Uh, Brock Kerr. Kerr. Hmm. Mr. Bur- Kerr. Barack. Barack Obama. Bur- we don't have time today, no. Barack. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's just call you Brock. Okay. Is it Brock? Yeah, that's good. All right, yeah. Brock. Where are you calling in from, Brock? Uh, Chillicothe, Missouri, about four hours north of Hickory County. Dude, there's a hickory everywhere. I'm yeah. telling you, there's a hickory in every state in this country. A hickory something, and Ch- Chillicothe. I've been, I've been to Chillicothe, um, and Missouri is the show me state, right? Yes. You know why they call it that? We're the home of sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? That is a true story. Okay. <laughs> well, that's not where I was going with the show me state part, but I like sliced bread. I mean, that's a great invention. You know what? Everyone says like, uh, "That's a something as sliced bread," or what was the what's the phrase there? I'm thinking of. That's as easy as sliced bread, or yeah. Well, thank you. Missouri has that to offer us. Sliced bread, nowhere near as cool as first in flight, but pretty good. No, or the show me state. Show which me is, state. That's, that's the more best. To brag about that, they're like, "Do you improve it?" <laughs> They're always skeptical in yeah, Missouri. They show me. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, Brock. Do you like it when people say Missouri? I'm either way on it. Yeah. I, I knew some people from Missouri, and they did not like Missouri. So I was just curious about that. What do you do, buddy? What's your What's your job? Uh, I was a railroad employee, and but I had a stroke at 34, but I survived. Congrats, by the way. Um, are you able to walk? Oh, yeah. Okay. You made a full recovery? Uh, no, still paralyzed on the left side, but uh, I make things. You and my dad have that in common. Old Popsicle paralyzed on his left side, but he, you know, his didn't uh, fare so well. He, he was older in age. So how old are you now, buddy? Uh, 39. Oh, so wow, that happened. Young age. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you know why? It was it hereditary for you? Did, 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 did something cause it? Just curious. No. Oh, it was caused by a dentist. <gasps> what? Dirty bastards. Dirty dentist a dentist. Bastard. Did, I hope you sued him. Yeah, I, I had an abscessed tooth, and then he didn't treat the infection, and then pulled some teeth, and the infection got into my system. Wow. And went sep- you went septic. Yep. It's happened to me. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. So did you? do you have a lawsuit on your hands? Are you going to do anything, or how'd that turn out? No. 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 We ran out of time, apparently. Yeah, you got three That's years. That's what I'm told. You got oh, three yeah. years to pull the trigger on that. Sorry, my friend. Well, but Brock, I'm glad you called in. I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad that uh, you, you you listen to the show. I hope your teeth are well. You hang in there, buddy. Yeah. And now I'm rooting for you yeah. a little bit. Now, have you been paying attention? Do you have a good guess? I have I have a number in my head, and I don't know if it's good, but uh, right. I got a guess. Let's give it a whirl, brother. Okay, let's go. Uh, $3.69. Oh, oh, I bet you got that number <laughs> All right, Brock. I see where your head's at, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's still in the game. <laughs> yeah, he's not totally paralyzed. Just on that left side. All right, put him on hold. The Allen Jackson. We have one more person that can guess, and it's a close game. I'm going to tell you all right now, it's a very close game. Do we have another person on the line? John Reap here. Who am I talking to? Bob Smith. Bob Smith. Now, I like that name. Very common name. I love this name. It's very easy to understand. Bob, most common names ever. Smith, most common name ever. How many Bob Smiths are in your phone book, wherever (laughs) you're from? (laughs) <laughs> actually, actually, it's Schmidt. S C H M I D. Schmidt. Damn. It, it's, it's the it's the German version of Smith. Gotcha. Ah. Yes. Um, I knew a guy named John 
Jacob Jingle Heimer Schmidt, <laughs> and, and his <laughs> name. It was my <laughs> name too. It was my name too. Well, wherever we went out, the people, people would always shout, shout "Hey, hey John, John Jacob, Jacob Jingle Bob Schmidt." Except his name was Bob. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Yep. Um, appreciate you calling. Where are you calling from? <laughs> uh, Sherwood, Arkansas. Of course. Sherwood, Arkansas. Okay. Well, do you happen to know a guy by the name of <laughs> Shane Chastain? Where's Jonesboro, Arkansas? Jonesboro would be about 200 miles northeast. Okay. You look up a guy named Shane Chastain. Kent. You tell him John Reap sent you. Yeah. Uh, that Jonesboro is in Craighead County, and I'm in Pulaski County. Gotcha. Uh, well, what do you do for a living, Bob? Uh, well, I'm a security officer. Oh, okay. What do you secure? What, where, where? Uh, uh, over at uh, the local mall, McKay Mall. Gotcha. How old of a I man was, are you, Bob? I'm, oh, I'm six. I'm sixty years old. Sixty years young. Yeah, I like to say. Yeah, and 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 you and I have one thing in common. What's that, Bob? Red hair and blue eyes. Oh, oh Bob's yeah. a unicorn like myself. <laughs> Yes, sir. So, so you, Bob, should between. we should we let him in on the secret about the redheaded people, the blue eyes? Should we tell other people about us? Do you want? Do, should I tell go, tell go everyone? Right ahead. Okay. So watch yeah. this. Watch this. As a ginger, I have telepathy. See, and I can tell Bob a joke, and he will get it without me saying a word. Okay. Ready? Watch this. I'm gonna tell him a joke right now. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. He, he got it. Oh, Bob. That's between me and you, brother. Don't tell anybody that joke. I'll get canceled. No, no way. That's between the two of us. Oh. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, Bob. Let's hear it, buddy. How much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? $3.15. Ooh. $3.15. Now, listen, Stamos, I need you to get mobile. I need you to run that check in there to the Allen Jackson. And I may get a beer while I'm going. I'll, I'll cover for Thank you. Thank you, sir. You just hand it off to the Allen Jackson. He'll crunch the numbers. I've got a ginger beer extra. Uh, 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 actually, Mark, there's more in that cooler that you would like. It's a Miller Lite in there. Regular yeah, regular ones. Um, Allen's going to crunch the numbers, and it is a very, very close game. I'm not even sure who won. Sometimes I know right out the gate, but I still go through the motions. Yep. But I have no clue who won this one because it is that close. So listen, interesting comments from YouTube. Please. Listen, <clears throat> if you're going to thumbs down the podcast, the bumpkins are going to jump all over you. Mm-hmm. Just letting you know. Who's thumbing it down? One thumb down. On where? And all on YouTube. YouTube oh. comments only. Okay. Thumb down. Yeah. The bumpkins are rallying. Watch them. <laughs> better watch them. Boy. Listen, don't, if we only get one thumb down, I mean, I think you've said it before. You're you're not making it till you got some haters. You gotta have haters. You gotta have haters. Don't hate them too so, much. So, um, Marcus, you also have to go get the check. You gotta get the check. You can't. And then, oh, okay. uh, yeah. After you hand it off, you have to bring it back in here, and then let me know who was the closest. You know what I'm saying? Who was it that one? I can't wait to reveal it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, we have an interesting. Okay, Courier. all right. The Allen Jackson. Do do we have a winner? Uh, yeah, we sure do. Okay. Well, here's what I like to do. You just pop him on in the Zoom room and uh, or this phone bullpen, I like to call it, and we'll we'll just start talking to him. We'll find right. out who won. Here he's coming in right now. All righty, congratulations. Who is this? This is Bob. Bob Schmidt. Schmidt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My blue-eyed ginger friend. I'm drinking this ginger beer in your honor, Bob. Mm. What are you? Congratulations. Cool your guess was how much? $3.15. $3.15. The actual retail Correct. price My of this cheap. check was $2.86. Oh. $2 oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations, Bob. What, what are you going to do with all that cash? 
I don't know. I may buy me a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, boy. Get, get, you, get you a pack of uh, peanut butter crackers, too, maybe. <laughs> or maybe a ginger snack. Hey, maybe, maybe so if I have anything left. Oh, yeah. All right, Bob. So here's what I need you to do. Uh, I'm going to sign this check over to you. I'm going to send it in the mail. But in order to do that, I need your address. So I need you to go to countryish.com, click on the contact section, and send me a message mm-hmm. through the contact section of countryish.com. Give me your address and your name again and all that jazz. I'll get this out in the mail to you. What do you say, Bob? Sounds good to me, sir. All right. Well, look, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate everyone listening and calling in. We got a lot more show to do, and we've just begun, to be honest with you. We got uh, an interesting uh, Zoom coming in. We've got a great small town news story, uh, but we got to take a quick break, and we will be right back with more country ish after this. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, country ish will be back right after these commercial messages. <laughs> Hey everybody, John Reap here And I want you to go cruising with me Not in our cars But on a ship Yeah, let's take a ship together It's the Reap's Peeps Comedy Cruise November 6th through 11th This year We leave out of Port Canaveral, Florida We go to a private beach in Haiti Where they have the world's longest zip line Over water We're going to Nassau And it's five days, baby I'm doing a podcast I'm doing karaoke And I'm doing stand-up comedy And we're even doing Diamond Dallas Page Yoga So get on the boat with me Go to johnreap.com Click on the Reaps Peeps Comedy Cruise And this is the t-shirt you get Isn't that something? I'll see you on the boat. Hey there, are you a business owner? Do you have a product that you're trying to sell? Well, maybe I could help you. I've got over 350,000 followers across all my social media, and every episode of Country Ish We Do gets thousands of views. So if you have a product that you want me to try on the show or to talk about, Go to countryish.com, click on sponsorship, and maybe your stuff could be right here on my stuff. If you love this podcast and you love wearing shirts, well, we got something for you. If you go to countryishpodcast.com, click on merchandise, it'll take you to my store, and we have an awesome t-shirt for you. It's a countryish podcast t-shirt. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Also, it's got the website on there. It's a soft tee, very soft, feels good on your skin, and it helps us keep the lights on here at the, at the studio. So check out countryishpodcast.com, click on merchandise, get yourself a t-shirt, and know that I love you. And we're back. Uh, appreciate you hanging in there. Don't forget, uh, we always love it when you rate, review, subscribe, and share. Hit the share button, man. Hit the share button. Sharing is caring, and we're going to get into that, too. Small Town News Story is great. Uh, Trish Sir is going to zoom in here in a little bit, but real quick, uh, you guys know I also do another YouTube show slash podcast uh, with my buddy John Heffron. It's called Heffron and Reap, and I'm going to show you a little clip of that. We got to talking with my buddy Steve Byrne, and it was all about fights that happened between comedians and audience members, and it's crazy. Steve's got some good stories. Watch this quick clip of uh, Heffron and Reap with Steve Byrne. We'll be right back. Before I go, before I get called up, this group of Asian kids gets up and walks out of the showroom. They stay for like two comics. And Uh. so... I'm being introduced as these Asian kids are walking out and I, I start walking up on stage and there's one, there's this guy in the back and he's eating chicken wings. The, the store didn't even give a shit. This guy brought his own food. in, <laughs> yeah. So he's eating his chicken wings and he looks at me and goes, Hey, your friends left. I go, what? Uh. And after he, he, after he says it, he goes like this <laughs> and he's oh. looking at his fingers. And that's what set me off. I was like, this piece of shit. I go, I go, what my friends, because they're Asian and I'm Asian. He goes, he goes, he takes another bite. He goes, yeah, and he's chewing. Oh, no. I go. Maybe I'll meet them outside. He go, and, and maybe you should join me. He goes, maybe I will. I go. Well, let's go meet them right now. 
So I get off the stage and you know how it's like a square. I get off, he gets off. We're both walking towards the door and I grab him and we end up on the ground. And I'm like, I'm like Ralphie in a Christmas story. Now I'm like, you read him. <laughs> right. And just then his buddy takes one of those, the back tables and he takes a table and he's going to drill me in the head with it. Brett Ernst tackled that guy and Brett Ernst is taking that guy out now. And now it's a melee in the comedy store. And um, I got pulled off. They got separated. Tommy called me the next day and uh, it, it became a thing for a minute. I, I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to get sued. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. And I pulled out the race card because, uh, <laughs> well, it, it actually. Well, that's how it started. Though, you know? It's how it started. <laughs> so I hated to rely on that because I hate to be that person. But uh, but that 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 happened. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome, dude. I've never heard that story. I didn't know that one. How great is this? You got those two stories and you forgot the one God, I yeah. was He's not even on on one. <laughs> The one that I was thinking of. I've never had anything like that, man. Not, but I not... find it shocking that Hef would take a take a juicy one to the ear because Hefron, <laughs> he, he, he like he studies like you you I, know. Well, I and, used to like a hundred years ago, but it, yeah, it's but you, th that's still burning the hard drive. I'm sure like you could. You're, you're Liam Neeson. You have a set of skills, and you, you haven't used them in a while, but you still. You know what it is? Though? It was one of those situations where you didn't think you were going to be hit. It's it's like, let's say, you know, you're talking to your mom and she goes, oh, I made you a grilled cheese sandwich and then punches you. It can completely <laughs> came out of nowhere. Did you, did, was him. the guy big or something or was he? No, he, he was a big fat guy. So th there are those big fat guys that. Somehow, because you've always been bigger, because I've always, I have a skinny man complex. I, right. I've always been little. High school, I was 112 pounds, but this guy was big. Right. But it's weird when you see some big guys like that. You're not afraid of them because mm -hmm. you know they got one move, and that's just to swing at your head. Right. And all, all, they're they're easy to deal with. I'm yeah. way more afraid to fight a guy who's like 140 pounds because he you might know? know something. These days, like everybody, you never know. You got to look for the yeah. cauliflower ears. A yeah, little, a little scary. twisted nose. Yeah, I wish they made cauliflower ears like you could just like just a like, <laughs> yeah. Because if I was arguing with you and I turned and I saw you have cauliflower, you win the argument. I'm just that's I'm a, sorry. yeah. I bet you that's a great little. Uh, I would ooh. never, never. But instead of getting plastic surgery to make yourself look younger, plastic surgery to make yourself look like a badass. Like, fake like cauliflower like, ear, little yeah. scar. Just like a scar. Yeah, a little scar. Thing. When people ask about it, you go, just it's something that my therapist and I just decided we don't talk about. <laughs> just, then you leave it. You're just like super aloof or something. Yeah, but before, I had, before like a weekend in Des Moines, you kind of get the surgery and then you go back to L.A. and you take it off, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or some prosthetics. Yeah, yeah, you could take on and off. I like that. That's I, I get to work on that uh, social media. Huh? How about that, dude? <laughs> That's funny. Cauliflower ear. Yeah, would we'll not mess with a cauliflower ear guy. If I see that, leave that dude alone. Or a guy with one eyeball, maybe. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be able with a facial scar. Yeah, anything that looks like with. they've been through battle. Uh, let us know what you think of that in the comments section. We got the intern over here, Sebastian, uh, filling in today. He's double dipping in the YouTube and the Facebook. Uh, Give me a peeps. Yeah, hit him up. He'll read your comment. Also, if you got no money and you want to help the podcast, what you can do is go to iTunes or Apple Podcast and write a review and leave us five stars. And if it's a, if it's a good review, I'll read it on the show and give you a shout out. So make sure you do that. What we let me know when Trish is here. We have a um, small town news story as well that I can't wait to read you guys. From Louisiana, it's going to be fantastic. But we have uh, what's? Oh yeah, she's here. Yeah, she just oh, uh, popped in the room. Wow. She is ready for you. John. What timing that is! Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to introduce you guys. Perhaps you've already seen her. You probably have and don't even realize it. Uh, she's best known as the yard sale diva on more than 300 episodes of the Style Network's Clean House. She's been on The Office, Reno 911, Hollywood Today Live. She's a very funny girl, and she's my good friend. Who's Zooming? I'll tell you who's Zooming. Trish Sir. Oh! And 
she's here right now. The very talented, very charming, very pretty Trish, sir. How are you? I'm good, John Reed. How are you, you doll? I miss you. I'm doing good. I miss you too. We both, both of us have uh, left Los Angeles. Um, we did. Yeah. I think we should give everybody a little bit of a history first. Okay. You're okay. my brother from another mother. Should we just start there? Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, uh, I mean, you should know Trish. She's uh, been on TV a very long time. She's very funny, part of the Southern Fried Chicks as well. I mean, since the last we talked, a lot's changed. You left L.A. You're in Atlanta. In Atlanta, I, I divorced my husband. That was fun. <laughs> well, I was I was hoping you would bring it up. I, I, I knew you'd appreciate that. Cause this is when you know this is when as being a Southerner becomes your life becomes country song. Uh, divorce. <laughs> The first husband I met, new husband, who uh, is in Atlanta, and we met in L.A. So I okay. met him in L.A. So you met him in L.A. You moved yes. to Atlanta. Uh, and I want to be back in L.A., though. The, you want to be back in has, L.A.? I do. I love – because I have always said, and you know that about me, I'm kind of like – the Eagles. I put the Southern in Southern California. I'm like Southern rock. I'm more like California. Yeah. You, you know that about me. I'm not like rhinestones and <laughs> let me go right. dig a coal mine. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my jam. I'm a little more Topanga mountains of mountains of California. Well, still love being you, from the South. This you know is why we me. fit because you're on the name of the show is country ish. And I call it ish, you know, because it's me too. I'm not a hundred percent rednecky cowboy guy. I grew up in Hickory, but survived and lived in Los Angeles, did well, you know. So I, I have my feet in both both worlds, as do you. Um, That's right. So yeah, I, 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 there are many times on this show where I, uh, I got friends from Hickory who are way more country than me. And we'll be talking about something, and they'll go like, well, how do you not know that Merle Haggard sang that? I'm like, I, I mean, I knew, but I forgot. And then they take away my country card, and I go, well, look, that's, I'm the ish. I tell you, it's ish for a reason. So I, That's right. Yeah. We're the same in that regard. I think that's why we've always gotten each other, too, is I like being in town. Yeah. Uh, in Atlanta. <laughs> in Atlanta, I enjoy You town. like your Starbucks. <laughs> I do. I like it. I like a town. I like, I like diversity. I like real people. Yeah. Um, and then in LA, we'll probably get something out in Malibu. Cause then I like, you know, in, in LA, I like to go into town for supplies. I don't like <laughs> being in town in LA, which is, this is where the our Topanga, I'd live in Topanga too, but that's, that's been our constant joke is that, you know, in LA, I'm like, Head for the woods, but in Atlanta, I'm like, someone get me in a city. I don't <laughs> yeah. Now, didn't you? Did you surf a lot too? Did, did... I do. Yeah, I paddle surf too now, mostly not because now, you know, as I have matured, it's rough on the bones to get washing machine. But paddle <laughs> surfing, I can stand on the board and chill, and so yeah, yeah, I love it. So you missed. I'm sure you missed the ocean if you're in Atlanta. You miss oh. being that close to the to the water. Yeah, and it's humid. It's from it. John, this humidity is from hell. I yeah. can't do it. I can't do it. I lived in LA for 20 years. You have to realize I was there for 24 years. I know I only look 30, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see that you're using a metal straw. Uh, okay, y'all. I do the same John, thing. I have, John. I don't have it with me, but I got a tumbler. Comes with the metal straws. Uh, here's the only problem I have with the metal straw. Talk to me. Have you done this yet where you put it to your mouth and maybe you, your depth perception is off and you hit yourself with that straw? It'll pierce your lip. It'll cut you. It could chip a tooth. You. I've given myself a fat lip, not paying attention and going yeah. like, just straight in on the side, pull fat lip. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Yeah. Well, I saw you post something earlier today about the paper straws and stuff. I'm with you. I I, I appreciate what Starbucks is trying to do. And I am a Starbucks nerd. Um, and I appreciate that they've got that little lid with the sippy cup spout, mm -hmm. but I drink like a toddler. So trying to use the sippy cup spout backfires on me. So I'm still a straw human. And then they give you that prep paper straw that you tear up. So I go through three of them yeah. trying to get it in that little, you know, straw yeah. sip. It's a, it's a hot mess. And then you got to drink so fast because it's dissolving. Right. 
I'm like, this yeah. is so much pressure. It's like, what is the answer? You're right. I mean, uh, those are great, but then you don't want to keep those around all the time. You're supposed to walk around with a bunch of metal <laughs> plastic straws the whole time, you know? Yeah, where you're supposed to be like, one quick second. No, I brought my own. And, <laughs> and you see that my, I use the bent <laughs> one, so that's even weirder to keep in your bag. You're like, one second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, good. I'm glad everything's going good. I'm glad you're, uh, I hope to see you when I go to Atlanta. I'll be there. Um, uh, uh, when do, are you here? I'm doing the punchline August, yes. August 12 through 14. I haven't been back there since the pandemic. I've, I've had things on the schedule with them that had to get moved. I, I'm going to ask you some hypotheticals. I think you're hilarious. Oh. You got a good sense of humor. Uh, people, I always tell people I get mine from my dad. My dad was the funny one. Yes. My mom's great, but my dad was funny. My mom was just sweet. And I, that's Betty a good combination. Precious. Betty rapes from heaven. Yes, she is. Yes. And yet you've got a good mix in your house. What about you? Who's, where do you think you got your funny? My papa. Oh. I actually, I say, I say I get all my funny from both my grandparents because both my parents are both boring, but my <laughs> grandparents are hilarious and I was around them all the time. And uh, to this day, I would equate my grandparents' humor to be my humor. Yeah. For sure. Okay. They both were of crazy. them? Crazy. Like both of them on your, like your mom and dad? Uh, my mom's, yes. My dad, my daddy, my daddy with a thick Jersey accent. And my Nana had an Irish brogue. And so my, my dad's dad loved that he had a country grandbaby. He couldn't believe it. He'd talk like this. And his grandbaby, <laughs> and his grandbaby would be like, hi, B. I called him Big D, Big Daddy. I go, hi, Big D. And he'd go, Oh my God. And he, do you remember the shake and bake commercials yeah. when we were little? It's shake and bake. And, and I, I helped. <laughs> and I helped. And he, anytime I call, he wouldn't let me even talk to him he, before I could, I had to say, it's shake and bake. And <laughs> I helped. Oh uh, man. He was just fun and silly like that. And my papa was just, I mean, a hot mess express. Hilarious. Yeah. I want to talk about deviled eggs for a quick second. Yeah, talk to me about it. We went out to, uh, when we lived in L.A., we were working on a TV show. We went out to eat at a restaurant in Studio City, I believe. The local peasant. I remember this. The local peasant. And we were both delighted that they, they had deviled eggs on the menu. They had bougie deviled eggs. They had quail eggs. Quail deviled, deviled eggs. eggs. They were this tiny little, uh, yeah, they were good. They were bougie. You called them bougie. I love that. Um, but cause I know deviled eggs to be what my mom makes, which is the traditional deviled egg, a regular egg. That's it's right. like pap, 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 paprika. On paprika. It. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And these were, they had a scallion or was it a chive? Who's to say, but they were <laughs> darling and they were petite because they were quail and John and I are popping them like Tic Tacs. And we got two orders and I was like, I love this guy. Cause you were like, those are so good, but they were like teeny tiny. Yeah, like, Let's yeah. get more. And I was like, <laughs> well, since I've been home and my mom, she still makes deviled eggs. I told her about ah. this story and I'm like, we can experiment with the deviled eggs, mom. We can try all kinds of stuff. That's right. You could make like sriracha deviled eggs. You could go go to town, make them spicy. Well, what we did was, uh, because I've rediscovered my love for p pimento cheese since I've been oh. out here. Yeah. Love. Who doesn't love a pimento cheese? Especially if you go through a Delta Sky Club in Atlanta airport. They give you, <laughs> they give you a pimento cheese eight ways. I just forgot about it being in LA. I just, you didn't see it a lot. It just wasn't on my brain, you know? That's right. And then I came home. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot all about this pimento cheese. So now we make deviled eggs. We put pimento cheese in there. Oh. Right. And not mustard, but a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of, uh, we'll take bacon bits. We'll take. Oh, bacon bits. Cheese. Lord God. Yeah. We just yeah. make it like a breakfast pimento cheese deviled egg and it's great. I eat them every day yes. for breakfast. I don't blame you. That sounds like a dream sequence and technically it's healthy. Right. Technically it would be healthy. I think. Yeah. I, All right. Think. Let's do some yeah. hypotheticals. <laughs> Trish. All right. I okay. love doing these yes, games. Yes. I love these games. And I know you're good at this stuff. Okay. Here's your sinking boat. You got three people in this boat. You can only save one. Okay. You And here are the three people. You okay. got Matt Eisman. Oh. You've got Niecy Nash. Oh. And you've got Dolly Parton. Oh. <laughs> 
Christ, why did you just do me? I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's tough. <sighs> These are my, tough. You went for my Achilles. Um, that that I think I should have done F Mary Kill first. Oh <laughs> I thought gosh. about that. Well, I'll tell you, you know, Dusty Hill from ZZ Top passed away uh, this past week, as you're yesterday, technically speaking, but I know this is. Uh, yeah. Would, yeah, Dusty Hill passed away from ZZ Top. Who's my husband's like idol. Oh. I married a bass player, so bass yeah, player, bass player. Right. Okay. And I told him because he was he was tore up, uh, rightly so, right? It was just, and it was unexpected. He died in his sleep, seventy two. And I said to him, "When Dolly Parton goes, you're gonna have to sedate me. Right? Like you're literally gonna have to sedate me when Dolly leaves this earth." So I, I know went, you love Dolly. That's why I put her in there, and I know. <laughs> I love um, Nacy, and Matt's like my brother from another mother. So, Lord God, I you know what though? I feel like Dolly's lived a good life, and she's got a built-in flotation device. I'd save the Nacy. I'd save the Nash. That's a good answer. Yes, <laughs> good, good answer. Nacy's um, got more to give. Matt, he, he's he's fairly strong. Yeah, he, he can swim like he, a long time. Yeah, he looks like Mr. Incredible, so I feel like he'd make it somehow. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good, good answer. All right. Wait, coming in hot, is that Cher on your hat? I just realized yes. I've talked. Where did you? That's amazing. Let me tell you Cher, about this hat. Please. All right. Well, you see an image of Cher, and you also see a blue arrow, which is the share button on Facebook. So when I go live... Uh, like like we're doing right now. At the beginning of the show, I put the hat on, and I say, "Don't forget to hit the share button." And I do a thing. <laughs> well, the wig is way over there. I'll put a wig on and I'll sing like share. Okay, if I could make you share, if I could find a way, you will. Yeah, here we go. Right. Oh, hang on, my. just for you, Trish. Um, and this will remind I, everybody at home watching us right now. This is these are the things that I do for for my uh, viewers to get you to share. I call it the share stare, and I just look right down the camera, and I go, if I could make you share, I want you to do it today. <laughs> Please hit that arrow button that points this way. I want you to hit the share button. I need you to hit it now. That's what I do at the beginning of every show. I'm not going to, oh, you know. I am dead. I'm deceased. <laughs> Time of death. Are you kidding me? So it's really just born out of me trying to get people to hit the share button. And I thought, well, well I like share too. She's icon. You kind of look a little bit like Slash with a yeah. better, like a beard. <laughs> right, right. But then, I was here for that whole vibe. I was here for the whole thing. <laughs> well, I hope to see you in Atlanta when I come. Me too. I would love that. I will come. I will bring down the husband. Y'all will love each other. Come no. stay at the house, have a beer, and meet the dogs. Come, you, I will. Come out, hang out, feel free. Uh, if you want to get up, you can get up, but you don't have to get up because I know what that's like, too, if it's been a minute because I was scared to death the first time I went back on stage. Hey, John, can I tell you, I've really I've thought about it because I have not I have not done comedy, yep. nor, nor have I written a joke. Right. <laughs> right. Although I think 2020 pretty much would be just therapy to get on stage and all this just carry out. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't been on since uh, February, uh, February 16th of 2020, 2020. February 16th. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, that first gig back, I was like freaking out. I was in Florida, of course. And I was in the green room freaking out because not only did I forget a lot of my jokes, I forgot what I called them. Like I forgot yes. the name of the joke. Names, how we set them up in our head yeah. so that we know that for comics, if you're a comic, you know, but is it, if, you, if you're a comic and you don't know, like I take a cheat sheet on stage. And for me, I, I simply just write down the one. So I know how I reordered them much like a, a rock star writes down a set list. Right? Sure. So I, I write down, we write down one liners. Like I, I do, you know, uh, bless your heart. I do. Right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sitting there thinking of them all right now. I can't do See? Customer support, poor customer service. Like I write down all the little, and they're not even the taglines. It's just what we know as transitions. It might not even make sense to anybody else. Right, but, <laughs> right, right. You right. know, you look at them sometimes, you're like, what is this Sanskrit? And it's just kind of how, and I'm so anal. I don't know if you, every show I do, I write the date and the venue and the order in which I move the lineup around. Oh, that's smart. 
I don't do that. I should do that. So I, yeah. so I can kind of see, and then I have a stack of them. So, and then I, I personally grade them like oh. a moron, <laughs> like how I felt. So I felt like a, like a, meaning just the movement of the order for me, how that worked. So yeah. or if I put in a, a new joke and I write in what the new joke was or if it worked or not, or so, yeah, it's a little, it's a little trick that I would tell you right now, I would be uh, honored and scared simultaneously. Right. I'm well, it's just, stage. it's out there. Take it or leave it. Either way, it'd be great to see you. Where can people find you? I know you're all over the social medias, but where do you want people to go? <laughs> I am at Trish Sir on all the platforms, everybody, not hard to find. So, uh, but I'm mostly on, if you need me, I'm on Instagram. If you need to email me, just email me at info at Trish Sir, just whatever you need. I'm at Trish Sir.com. That's my yeah. email. Yeah. Uh, uh, T R I S H S U H R.com. Yeah. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, John Reef. I adore you. I miss you. Namaste. Oh yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Isn't she great? She is great. Trish She's, what a personality. Sir, right. Uh, check her out at trishsir.com. She's amazing. Hopefully I'll see her in Atlanta when I go because my next gig is in Atlanta, August 12, 13, and 14. All right. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, I did the share stare twice. You have. You know, that's a double whammy. Show. So that means, you know, hopefully you hit the share button during that. Maybe you'll hit it now. Uh, Sebastian's over there, double duty. He's got Facebook and YouTube pumping. Double duty. Yeah. So uh, uh, we, got, we got one more segment, and I'm very excited for this segment. There's a lot of negative things that are going on in the news but we don't like to talk about that. We like to find the fun, happy-go-lucky, weird stories that fall through the cracks. It can be best described by Justin Clyde Williams. We're just small-town dudes with small-town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All righty, I got a dandy. You know, this segment, once in a lifetime, you get great little stories that just pop up randomly like this, and we got a good one, dude. I can't wait to get to it. Let's get I'm gonna it. I'm going to read you the headline right here. Focus. Look at me. I'm going to read you the headline. Yep. <laughs> You're looking over there. <laughs> I, was, I don't know, know what screen to look at. Well, this one's closer <laughs> okay. to you. That, that's a good call. You're in the middle of two screens. Yeah. A Louisiana man is creating a trailer park just for swingers. Mm. Mm. Nice. Yeah, you grew up in a trailer park. I grew up first? in many a What's trailer parks. What's your initial thought on that? Um, Did you ever see any swinging in your day? Uh, I've recently saw some swinging. Uh where I live now, but not in the trailer park. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, you remember that story. That is right. You yeah. sent me a video. Yeah, I had some neighbors. And that, neighbors uh, were doing it. And I think they were trying to get me to come up and swing. That's hilarious. Yep. So apparently wow. that's a thing. Yeah, baby! <laughs> were you the odd man out? Jesus. Were you the odd man out or what? Uh, didn't have to be, but I oh. chose to be, yes. Okay, okay. So that's, but this is a trailer park in Louisiana just for swingers. Grab your ball hitches and bring your bitches. <laughs> in Mamou, Louisiana, population 3,000, a guy by the name of David Owenqua. It's like one of them French names, Owenqua. Cajun names, yeah. He's opening a place called T Boys Swingers Trailer Park. Look at that. See, it's spelled T Boys T E E, not T E A. It's not about tea bagging. Okay, it could be. This is T Boys Trailer Park, and their motto is "Bring your house, share your spouse." Correct. Isn't this great? It's great. I said it. Also, at the bottom, it says, please send a photo. For oh, a yeah. Photo. We're going to get yeah, to yeah. all of that. <laughs> the Alan Jackson, should we share the video right now or should I keep going with the story? What, what do you want to do? I mean, it's great. Their motto is bring your house, share your spouse. <laughs> yeah. I love a good rhyme, to be honest with you. Yeah. You can park her in the rear. Put it on a flatbed if you have to. It's Louisiana. They could have called it Wife Swamp. 
Mamu. Let's hear this. President Lafaso shares the news of a trailer park and campground gaining attention and getting ready to swing in to southern Louisiana. It's a story you'll see only on 10. Bring your house and share your spouse. That is the motto of this soon-to-be trailer park and campground for swingers. Don't believe me? Take a look at the sign for yourself. You can come to Mamu for many a good things. This will be one of them. David O'Gwen is opening <laughs> T-Boy Swingers Trailer Park. For that's right, swingers. He says the swinger community is surprisingly bigger than you may think. Bigger than most will know. Live free and don't be scared of it. There's everybody, there's a big community of it. I think a bunch of them is not shy. The ones that are shy, hell with them. Roll with it. Good <laughs> thing compared to most things. Since Roll putting with it, up baby. this sign, Oakland's gotten calls from swingers across Steve the Winwood country. Said. We have got some from Pennsylvania. We have got some from Arkansas. Of course, all around Acadiana, all around Mamou, Ville Platte, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Slidell. We have text messages from all over the country. It's... <laughs> mind-boggling. He says they're getting so many calls, they that, can barely keep trailer? up with it. Most of them call or text just to see if it's real. Just to see if somebody's going to answer because they're going to say, oh no, nobody's there. It's not a real number. Or they'll get on Facebook, oh, it's not a real number. I got on there and I said, I'd be a fat frog's butt if it's not a real number. Everybody starts calling. And they start calling, hey, what's y'all address? Where is it? Is this in my room? Is this, where is this at? All right, pause it. Yeah. Turns out he's not a fat frog's butt. It is a real number. Real deal. Yeah, and it's right there on the sign. See it? He made a sign that says T-Boy Swingers Trailer Park. Our motto is, spelled motto wrong. It actually says our motto is. <laughs> motto is with two Ts, but that's neither here nor there. I think if you're going to stop in a trailer park for swinging, you're probably not watching us the the spelling bee either. You know what I mean? You're probably not hanging on every word. But anyway, our motto is, and it's got the number, 337 four. Five nine three three eight zero, and like you said, he's been getting tons of. Uh, they got a website, and uh, it, it says here the grand opening is set for Memorial Day weekend, twenty twenty two. So put that oh, okay. in your calendar. We got a little while prepared. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, there's going to be fireworks. Yeah, it's going to be in your pants when you leave there, and they'll have food. It's Louisiana. They probably have an etouffee buffet. All the crabs you can get, buddy. I mean, how, so how? Well, <laughs> thank you. You're thank listening. You, yeah, he doesn't listen. Crab. He just There's keeps. He's crabby. thinking of what he wants to yeah. say. <laughs> Well, what you got, buddy? No, never mind. I'm just interested <laughs> to see how this all works out. So. Well, there's more video. Uh, let me let me tell you. It says here when it's finished, the site will have a nude pool, nude yoga, strip poker, and a cabana for a, a, a key party. Now, do you know what a key party well, This is the question this is I the asked question. in the yeah. beginning of the show. Do you know what a key party is, Stamos? I do know what a key party is. Do you tell tell you? the listeners. So everybody, the- you go to a party, everybody throws their key in the dish, and uh, at the end of the night, you go pick a key out, and that's mm-hmm. who you're going home with, correct? That's, 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 that's pretty much it. Yeah. Apparently, I Googled it. I didn't know this. I didn't either until earlier. We talked about it. Yeah, but that is what a key party is, You, you, and that's who you end up with. I'm guessing if it's a trailer park key party, it's just one key. You don't have a set of keys. You would just throw the one key, the, the one key that opens the front door and starts the house. <laughs> no fobs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. There might be some good fobs. I have. <laughs> Fob sounds like something you'd do at a trailer park swinger party. Yeah, let's go fobbing. Fobbing for apples. Uh, <laughs> nude pool? You want to get in a nude pool at a trailer park, buddy? It sounds fun, huh? No, it doesn't. You don't want to go skinny dipping with Sal and Monella? <laughs> so, Sal, Sal and Manila. Manila. Ah. Yeah, that's his wife, Manila. Oh. And nude yoga sounds uh, a nanaste. <laughs> I don't want to be doing that. (laughs) And they got strip poker. Uh, So, look, he also says you can choose to live at the trailer park, but he's designed it to operate more like a campground where swingers can come for the party-themed weekend. So, yeah, it's all the cornhole you can get. (laughs) (laughs) This is Airbnb and TNA, Airbnb. (laughs) Airbnb, TNA. (laughs) The HOA stands for uh, Ho Owners Association. You better call now. They got 30 slots open. (laughs) (laughs) I uh, love this. Just to let you know, somebody popped in the Zoom room a second ago, so you just tell me whenever you want me to bring them on in. Oh, this is great. Look, 
the dude said it's open. He opened it for couples who are into swinging. And he says the swinger community is surprisingly bigger than you may think. It's bigger than most people will know. And that's what he said. It's like huh. a double wide with yeah. a big, big red dick. Yeah. Right. Now, are you telling me <laughs> that we might have this guy in the Zoom room, the Alan Jackson? I'm saying somebody just hopped in the Zoom room, and uh, I think well, we'd be I, uh, I'm checking out and see who it is. I'm hoping that it's the guy because I I called the number. The number was there for everyone to call. I called it. I actually I didn't call it. I texted it, and I said, "Hey, is this David?" I want to know how he pronounces his name, Oquan. And if it is, can you zoom into my show? And I'll be gosh darn if something didn't get back to me. And I gave him the link. Is that him? If it's him, let's get him in here. I'd love to talk to him. I'd love to talk to this guy. From uh, Mamou, Louisiana, the the man himself. (laughs) Yes, David, that's him. That's the guy from the news. What's up, David? How are you doing, brother? Oh, I'm all right. Now, your phone must be ringing off the hook. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little interesting during the day for sure. So, it's, I mean, you put your phone number up there. Is that your actual cell number or is it a different number? Oh, it don't get directly to me. I got a guy just answers the phone all day. Smart move. Yeah, because I I text the number. I didn't know if I was getting you or not, but I text the number. and Yeah. The more more important important folks like you get to me, that's the important part. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So what made you start this whole thing? I want to know from the beginning why. What happened? Let's hear it, David. Why not? Got to do something. Got to make people talk for a reason. Okay, well, there's lots of things you could have went on that one. <laughs> but you must be into the swinging a little bit. I'm not here to judge, David. I I am not. I, I do not throw stones at glass houses. I'm not a virgin by any means. But I would like to know how and why it started for real. It, it's not because you can't do something. You have a reason. But I, I am not, nor ever was or will be a swinger. Okay. Uh, just happened to know somebody in the lifestyle that, mentions difficulties and and troubles and throwbacks and everything else that they can't get along with i don't mind controversy i don't mind standing up for something now uh the picture on the news uh it looks like an old sort of old like rusted out kind of shed that's not where we're swinging is it no that that's whenever i bought the property it just happened to be there and i had my sign and i said we're gonna hang the damn sign no matter where we gotta hang it <laughs> now uh so you're you're slated to open oh i want to make sure i'm pronouncing your last name right is it oh, oqua oquen oquen Oh, that, that's close. It's hard for y'all, y'all weird folks to try to think that <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. You got that raging Cajun thing going on down there. Um, yeah, something like that. It is hard to pronounce. Oh, qua. It sounds like a French Cajun name, right? Sure. Okay, right. We'll go with that. Now, <laughs> why are we calling it T-Boys? Is that named after someone, T-Boy? Well, doesn't it sound good? Well, it sounds like a rapper. There's a rapper named T-Boy. Did you consult him? <laughs> no, and I don't rap very well either. <laughs> yeah, but do you think that he might call you up and go, what's up with the naming of the trailer park and the swinging after me? <laughs> Maybe he likes to swing. I don't know the guy. <laughs> okay, so we have no clue. Uh, but I'm curious. You had to call it T-Boy for a reason. Your name is not T-Boy. It's David Oquan. Why are we calling it T-Boy? there got to be a reason, David. Come on with it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a reason. There's, pl- there's plenty of people that want to know that. It's, it's not interesting if I tell everybody. Mm-hmm. you got to have one that's somewhere. Okay. He's always he's not, somebody he's not, to wonder. Yeah. He's not showing his hand. He's not revealing a lot. <laughs> but, but but people want to know, David. You're in the news. You're know. blowing you gotta, up. You keep them wondering. If you tell them everything you spit of beans, they, they ain't coming back. But how do we get people there if we're not answering questions? Like, I want people to show up. I feel uh-huh. like this could be an episode of HBO's Real Sex if they still had that show. I don't I love know that show. if that's still going on. But I feel like you could get a TV th- deal out of this thing. You know, call it it's, Wife Swamp. 
<laughs> you can put it on Netflix, huh? I could make a good Netflix series. Yeah, you could get an Amazon Prime deal, Hulu, all kinds of stuff. If you ain't got an extra chair next to you, I could do something good over there. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, dude? I've got all my shots, man. I'm clear, you know. Although I do have – I don't have uh-huh. a wife, and I do believe one of the stipulations was that you were saying – that you had to you had to send a picture of the, your spouse in, in order to be pre-approved to get in the thing. Well, you got a dog. It's not me that answers the phone. So if you had a dog or anything you want to send a picture of, I'd be happy because there's going to be another man looking at it, not me. How many pictures have you gotten so far? Not you, but whoever. How many pictures? I mean, you must have gotten a lot of pictures. They've, we've got a lot of pictures, hey, and, and some of them are probably pictures you might be happy to see. And a bunch of them are just some fellas of pictures you just don't want to see. I, yeah, but I actually do want to see all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I am so curious, dude. This is amazing. So you're going to open it uh, Memorial Day 2022. Is that right? That's what we're shooting for right now, man. It's gotten so much bigger. I don't even know if our venue places is big enough. I do own some more property that we might have to move to in a bigger uh, location because it just seems to have gotten way out of hand at the moment. And you're going to have, um, I mean, will there be like, for, it's Memorial Day, so are you going to have like like food and fireworks and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, there'll be plenty of fireworks. I don't know if it's the one you told. There'll be plenty of fireworks. Yeah, I feel but like it, you should have an etouffee buffet. That's an etouffee buffet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> What the other man told me, if I feed too much food, I'm going to attract the bigger crowd. And I don't know if we want the bigger crowd coming out to the swing. Of I, I feel like that's going to be the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the pictures. You're not letting me know a lot of stuff. Do you? Uh, so, so do you like to play poker? Because that's one of the things that they're going to play is poker, right? You're going to have strip poker? I, I'm not going to play. Uh, what they play is up to them. Now, there just will be a room with a table and some some cards where they decide to play with it's up to them. Now, Marcus, stay must. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Let's just say that you owned a lot of land and you had to talk about something. <laughs> Would you just start this out of nowhere? I think David's not telling us everything. I think he's smart by not telling us everything. I think he's got us. He's got us wondering, and and uh, uh, well, he's got us thinking. Yeah, yeah. He's smart. So uh, the, you're on Facebook, right? Yes. And uh, now, do people need to make reservations for this, or do they just show There's up? Plenty of people trying to make reservations, but we're not quite at that stage yet. Everybody keeps on messing me about some reservations, but we're not quite at that that stage, so it don't help to to request that. How did you come across the land? Did you purchase this, or was it born into it? Was it given to you? Was it your, your pappies? No, not my pappies. I, I just purchased – I own property of quite a few places in our little community, but I did just purchase this one that I've been trying to buy for a while for, for just such an occasion. What now? Uh, Mam- Mamu. What's Mamu? Uh, am I saying that right? Ma- Mamu? <laughs> Mamu. 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 I'm sorry. Mamu. Mamu. <laughs> And what, so, and Mamu, what do you do for a living before you started the trailer park of the swinging? What was the, the job? Uh, I have quite a few business adventures in our, in our community. Uh, do tell. My, we're roughly mad at me right now. So I, I hate to have to, I got a, a honeybee farm. I got a recycling yard. I have, I have quite a few things, man. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Recycling yeah. and honeybees. Yeah. He's, a, he's a hustler, man. Well, that makes sense to me. A trailer, like a swinging trailer park owned and operated by a recycling honeybee farmer. That makes sense to me. I'm getting that. Do you have honey there? That uh-huh. Like if I go to the trailer park and I get... <laughs> Can I purchase the honey? And maybe a shop, a store. I can make a special request to make sure you got some honey when you get there. Uh, you know, I'm we all got, about that honey, we need David. John Reap honey. We got John Reap <laughs> oh, I do have sauce. my own hot sauce. I'm gonna we send you hot sauce here, brother. I, I seriously want to get your information because I want to send you some of my hot sauce that maybe you could put in the store. We'll go fitty fitty. What North Carolina folks call hot sauce? Well, it's not hot to you, right? In Louisiana, you're gonna think this is just like. Uh, a, a fireball piece. You're not going to like it, the hot part of it, but it is flavorful. I think you'll like that part. How old of a man are you, David? All right. Uh, I think I'm 36. 
Thirty six. <laughs> he don't know if that's the. He's, he's he don't know. If that's I'm just starting to wonder if this is like a legit it. thing. Oh, it's not. a real number. I want the sign is real. It was really in the news. Uh, I guess we'll find out come Memorial Day. And I think he's going to need three or four football fields. Yeah, but you're going to be when the Netflix starts calling you. Will, it'll be real. <laughs> well, I think it's real right now. It's blowing up, and uh, I can't wait to find out. Uh, please take lots of pictures. Uh, please save the pictures, and then maybe the next time we have you in here, uh, if you choose, uh, I would love to see some of these pictures. Can we, can I send you some pictures? Not me. You can send that guy some pictures. Don't well, who's this guy? <laughs> I want to know who the guy is. Why am I not talking to I this guy? I want to be the guy. Who's the guy? You're just the middleman, Brian. I want to talk to the real guy. I need to be the guy. Hire me, bro. <laughs> The, the, that's the number you got. That's for Nick. Nick's the picture man, and the, he got to answer the phone. And we <laughs> Nick or Nick. Nick, Nick. So it rhymes with uh, yeah. Nick. Nick the Nick. <laughs> I got it. All right, that's brother. Nick. Hey, listen. Best of luck to you. Uh, feel free to uh, tell everyone who comes there to check out the country ish uh, YouTube show and podcast. That's what you're on. I'll send you a hat. And some hot sauce. No need for a T-shirt. I'm sure they'll just take it right off. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're gonna have to do. No, no pictures of you, please. Oh, that my my pictures are out there. I got a whole. Yeah, you Google me, buddy. You'll see all you need to see. All right. I appreciate you zooming in, buddy. You have a good one. Okay. You too, sir. All right. Bicycle. There we go, guys. The actual inventor. I Marketing think genius. I think the inventor or might, might be the Nick dude of the trailer park for swingers, David O'Quan. He wasn't giving up much. Ah, uh, very private. Very. Uh, you gotta keep yeah, but how can you be that fish. private and then post and do this? Keep clo- you gotta keep it close to the There's hip. There's no way. Close to the hip. Uh, uh, he may not. I want to pull him aside and go like, just in terms of marketing and getting the word out. Yeah, you gotta. Tell more. Yeah, you got to be a little more. But, open. You're right. Maybe he's, he's a teaser. On he's he's a yeah. He's a teaser. That's what it is. Well, I had a good time up in here, boys. You have a good wow. time today. Well, almost two hours. I know. It's and worth it. Our show. We went two hours. What a great small town news story that was. Um, yes, there you the go. Town Mamou. May be small, but Mamou. Is here. Mamou. <laughs> right. Mamou, Louisiana, everybody. All righty. Well, any corrections thus far? Have I screwed up? Sebastian, talk to me, Goose. I don't see if you've screwed up anything. Uh, maybe some uh, innuendo. Mm-hmm. A lot of innuendo. That's a, a good lot thing. of innuendo. I like innuendo. that. But a lot yeah. of good comments. Keep the comments coming. Keep sharing. We have to have another 10 shares in the next three minutes. Why? What happens? Well, because I'm the number one intern tonight. <laughs> you are the number one intern. I'm setting the He's world record for interns. That's a salesman right So there. you're saying if we get to 10 yep. more shares. Justin, Ashley, all off Facebook, I need you to share right now. We're coming. Yes. Give them the shout outs, brother. Ringing and swinging. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate Good. it. I love it. By the way, Karen and Sharon, great names for two swingers. I don't know if yes. I put that joke in there. I like it. <laughs> Oh, boy, I had a good time. The Alan Jackson, how are you doing in there? Any corrections on your end? Are we good? I I, I think everything uh, sounded pretty good tonight. All right. Well, listen, for the Alan Jackson, for Sebastian, for Marcus Damos, for David O'Quinn, for Mamou, for Trish Sher, I am John Reap. Bicycle! Well, I've owned the farm, it's kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot the back and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, it's a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your self park cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for Country Hey, everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh, wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com 
click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us in many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you. Get ready. <laughs> Crabbies brought to you by the Swingers Trailer Park in Mamou, Louisiana. Huh? Raging K.